Hello, today I have another Anchor product. This is a revised video since I had an error from the Siglent load tester on time reporting. The clock is not accurate on that device. I've seen a lot of positive reviews, so I decided to find out if this power bank is all hype or if it can stand up to the all things one place testing gauntlet and come out on top. This Anchor power bank has some unique features and throughout this video I will be exploring what those features are, so join me as I find out if this is the best power bank for the money. In this series I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? The videos get technical so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and will eventually be compared to near competitors. In this video the power bank will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities and to help you make an informed buying decision. This is my second power bank, so I was impressed with the first one, and time will tell if any of these are truly great. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to catch these videos. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to Patreon, a super button, and my website down in the description. Special thanks to my patrons. This is the Anchor 737 Power Bank Power Core 24K 24,000 milliamp hour 3 port portable charger with 140 watt output. Really, that's the name, and that isn't the actual model name, which is A1289. Upon opening up this power bank, you can see a plastic wrap power bank that is of a rectangular shape. It is actually fairly large. The power bank comes with a carrying pouch, a USB PD 3.1 power cable, nice, they includes one of these, and it'll be in the round four of USB cables, and a user manual. The user manual is not the worst thing ever. They give you some vague specifications for the outputs, the capacity, not how much it can actually supply though, and how to plug in a USB cable. And then tons of warnings like don't eat it, don't swim with it, don't use it, maybe not that last one. The power bank itself doesn't seem too bad. We can see there are some safety marks on the power bank, mostly pertaining to other countries, but the US is still in hybrid on this. Maybe we'll see this in the future. We do have the UK CA and the CE marks, so that's close enough for a power bank at this time. The packaging for this product weighs 229 grams. That's a lot of one-time use weight. The power bank weighs 627 grams. In comparison with the only other tested device at this time, it's quite a bit heavier. That one was 515 grams. So this should have a lot more output capacity. As usual, I pulled this from the Amazon listing, but it doesn't say much about what it can charge. They seem to keep it vague. iPhone 13 series, Samsung, MacBook, Dell, AirPods, and more. Almost like Anchor expects you to know what this can do. This power bank has three total USB ports, one USB-A port and two USB-C ports. The USB-A ports support various protocols, most popularly quick charge, and you can get a maximum of 18 watts from this port. The USB-C ports use the more modern and much more popular Power Delivery 3.1 specification. Each USB-C port delivers a fixed output voltage or a variable output voltage mode. The fixed voltages are 5, 9, 15, and 20 volts. Everything USB PD 3.0 can deliver. The other mode available is the PPS, or Programmable Power Supply Mode. This varies the output voltage to maximize charge efficiency. If a single port is being used, this offers the PPS mode of 21 volts, and it can go to over 100 watts. The bonus mode on this device is the 28 volt mode. This is the extended power range, 140 watt output capability in both the charging and discharging modes. Note that only port C1 is for charging. Both ports C1 and C2 can do discharging though. This is the most comprehensive set of protocols in any power bank tested yet. On every device plug and unplug, the device does renegotiate. The power bank is fairly aggressive with this, so charging and discharging does reset in various cases. As usual with Anchor devices, these voltages all tend to ride the minimums or below the minimums in some cases. This device does not have an always on output voltage. The device does switch off under a certain threshold. There is a detection at least with the USB-C, so if you plug something into the power bank, it does wake up. Power banks do some kind of marketing nonsense when it comes to the battery capacity. In this case, 24,000 milliamp hours, which is based on some math. In this case, six cells times 4,000 milliamp hours each gets to that number, but it doesn't consider that voltage changes over the discharge cycle. I'm not going to go into a ton of depth here, but this doesn't make too much sense. Basically, the unit of energy we care about is watt hours, like your electricity bill. Talking about a capacity in terms of milliamp hours essentially only gives you a piece of the picture, and since the voltage of the battery is a variable, it tells you nothing. What we need is watt hours. Anchor in nearly unreadable print on the back of the power bank states the watt hour capacity at roughly 86. If I was the marketing team, I'd use that number times a thousand to make it look bigger. 86,000 milliamp hours. More bigger number than 24,000 must be better, right? One is accurate though, and one is an approximation. We will find out that this number is maybe not 
too useful on this particular power bank when we get to the load testing. So we have a battery capacity of 86 watt hours, but we don't have a conversion efficiency like provided by the Bassius power bank. This means we have no idea how much energy we will actually be able to extract. I measured the output capacity at 72 watt hours. With the losses for converting the voltage to the output, you end up with about 84% of the stored energy being sent to the output. As it turns out, the signal analyzer was lying about time and giving me a low reading, so this adapter is better than expected. The overall system efficiency with various power adapters I've tested ends up around 76%. So using this power adapter wastes 24% of the energy you pay for to charge your device. That number will be worse with less efficient power adapters. This is not the worst if you need portable power. If everyone used a power bank like this, you'd need 24% more grid capacity for no benefit. I wish they would put these specifications on the product listing or on the web page, since it's all a guess when you buy. In this case, it wouldn't really help them though, since it's massively inefficient or the capacity is inflated greatly. Companies need to be honest and state the watt hour capacity for any battery product. This is a crucial number that tells you what you actually have for capacity. There is also the issue of air travel. Specifically, the airlines limit the battery capacity you can carry on a plane to 100 watt hours per pack. This means that certain packs that don't advertise the watt hour capacity could get you in trouble with the airline security, and you could end up throwing away your expensive power bank. In this case, people seem to be getting confused with the 140 watt rating. It would be nice to state the usable watt hour capacity also. I doubt anyone will do this because it's a variable, but an average value could be listed or a greater than some number of watt hours. Stating the capacity honestly will let people calculate real use times instead of expecting 86 watt hours, 72 usable. The thermals on this power bank during both charging and discharging stayed fairly stable, around 45 degrees C on the outside. But I did get an overheating warning while pushing this adapter with the 140 watt mode and had to wait about an hour before I could use the adapter again. So there are limits. It did drain all the way to zero before overheating, and it's good that it has this protection built in. In terms of the marketing claims, this power bank doesn't do terrible. We know the real capacity of this device and the claim charging capabilities from some of the online data. This device meets the basic marketing claims of iDevice charging. You'd be working for several days with this power bank. So not the worst thing I've seen. Let's get rid of those milliamp hours though and just state watt hours as an actual unit of energy for everything. Okay, charging and discharging. This is where things turn dark. I used two different chargers, but each had the capability to max out the charging speed for either the PD 3.0 or the PD 3.1 USB specification. I got a charge time of one hour and four minutes from zero to 100% with the PD 3.0 100 watt adapter and a charge time of 50 minutes with the Anchor 717 140 watt adapter. It looks like the actual charge rate is around 125 watts maximum and then it tapers off as the battery gets more full. This is normal. The energy consumed was roughly 96 watt hours during this process. I hope this has a lot more output capacity. The capacity I measured during a full discharge test was 72 watt hours. This is better than the last power bank with 10 more watt hours in, meaning it's about equal efficiency wise. This power bank ran for one and three quarters hours with a 40 watt load and 31 minutes with a 140 watt load. The power bank does support pass-through. If you have two devices plugged in, it looks like it limits the USB-C port to 100 watts. So this device can be used to charge another device while it is itself charging. It's great that it supports this. I decided to try this device as an uninterruptible power supply and found that sadly, this doesn't work. Once the power goes out, the power adapter runs out of juice and the USB PD negotiation kicked in and the device reset the voltage requirements so had to renegotiate the power. If you had a non-battery powered device plugged in, it would just turn off. This brings us into the overload testing. As with any power adapter, we can push this power bank to its limits to see how many watts it can deliver. In this case, starting at 140 watts out, which you can do no problem, I pushed it up to 142, 144, 146, and 148 watts is where the overload condition kicked in. Not bad. Recovery on this device is hit or miss. Sometimes you have to do an unplug and plug into the cable after an overload condition, but sometimes you don't. Okay, overall, this power bank does work, but it is surprising how inefficient it is. This is the only power bank with the higher output voltage capability, so the extended power range, PD 3.1, 140 watt output, and it will deliver all of its energy into 140 watt output before overheating. The price point is expensive considering capacity though, around 150 US dollars as of 2022. It isn't cheap, but it does have a premium look and feel. I expect this device to last a long time and be capable of, of doing a lot of charging and discharge cycles at nearly any USB power delivery requirement. I didn't really mention this, but the visual display is awesome on this thing with good indication of power used. The main questions around this adapter all seem to be about whether or not this can travel on a plane or not. 
it is under the 100 watt hours and so it can. Don't confuse watts for watt hours. One thing I didn't see on this power bank is a US or Canada specific safety listing, but this is a new category so I know we're going to start to see this on newer power banks. It does have the CE mark and the UKCA, so this is available to the global market. Overall, Anchor has a power bank here. Thanks to the fix in my data acquisition, I can say go for it. Sorry about the mix-up in the last video. It goes to show that even experienced data gathering can still find errors and it was bound to happen eventually. The main difference here is the runtime is about 5 to 10 minutes longer than originally estimated and the efficiency is much more reasonable. Thanks for watching. Next week I am possibly doing more travel adapters, but I may swap that out for the Apple 140 watt adapter since I've been on the go with those lately. There is also a schedule on my webpage for upcoming videos. I need to come up with a rating system for these power banks too. Check the description for links. Thanks again and bye.